Hi, I am Dr. Kim Sage. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today's video is really about a section in this book called Stop Caretaking the Borderline or Narcissist, How to End the Drama. And I just want to remind you how important it is to do this work that so much of this kind of childhood can live in our bodies as shame. And remember that shame is, I am bad, I am worthless, I am unlovable. And it often plays out in ways we don't even recognize, but I wanna go through a few ways it can show up if you are really digging down deep into sort of what you believe about yourself. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and joining us in this little growing community. Really quickly also, I have two courses that I have created for this topic specifically is actually a really good fit. This is called Remothered. It's an online course on Thinkific and it's full of you know exercises and videos and meditations, affirmations, and it really is about helping you heal that inner wounded child and the inner parent and how to set up your life in a way that honors your own healing, your own value, and your own healed inner child. And then my really flagship course called Healing and Dealing with Borderline and or Narcissistic Parents Who Are Untreated. And it is about 75 lessons, videos, meditations, affirmations, journal work, really from you know a place of love myself, from years and years of my own work and years and years of experience with many, many patients who have had really difficult parents themselves. You just tend to collect patients at times in a certain category that I think you find that you are passionate about or that you had happen to you or that you know about or that you want to learn about. And so I used all of that work for this course. All right, let's get into it. So I have many books on my website listed. This is one of them. And it can be very helpful if you're trying to sort out how to navigate, you know, how to have a relationship with, with different types of people in your life who have really complicated potentially, you know, mental health challenges or disorders, especially around BPD and NPD, because I truly believe that they are so common, at least the traits. And when you have a kind of emotionally unstable parent, it is especially difficult if you don't get your needs met as a child, because that becomes the template for how you see yourself in the world. And never is that more true than when you have parents who struggle with something like untreated BPD or NPD, because you often feel a sense of shame inside and not good enough and not lovable enough. Um, it can really play out differently depending upon the, those two disorders, but the core is often a sense of like, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough, there's something wrong with me. And it's not that my parents bad, it's that I'm bad. And so there's a few ways it shows up in your life. The first one is you feel that no one will ever really love you. And that really is true, as I've talked about in so many videos about this I am bad, that at the end of the day, when it all plays out, nobody will ever truly know you or see you or love you for who you are. Number two, as a result of not wanting to be seen as imperfect or trying to you know, walk on eggshells, we often don't want anyone to see our mistakes. We have a lot of shame around anything that feels like failure or mistakes. The third one is we often don't have good body image issues because our sense of self has been so intertwined with that guilt and shame and really yuckiness of childhood that in a culture that also is very shaming around what the perfect body looks like, we can be especially hard on ourselves and not able to really have any real connection to our bodies and to be proud of our bodies and see them as vehicles that have served us to be alive as opposed to some you know, um, exterior image we're supposed to keep up with the world. We also can have a difficult time with our emotions and really not wanting anyone else to see our emotions. And so we can be very private, very inner, um, introverted in many ways around our feelings. And when we do express feelings, feel a deep sense of shame and embarrassment for sharing that vulnerability with someone else. We can also be very afraid of conflict and afraid to disagree, often very conflict avoidant, especially if your parents were very much on that rage spectrum, which can be very common with borderline and narcissism if they're untreated, where the parent's rage might be outward and really you know, loud, or it might be very, you know, that repressed, kind of yucky, just dark, negative, condescending anger. But in any regard, it can feel very unsafe to have any ability to self-advocate or speak up for yourself. 
And that, like I'm saying, really does align with not standing up for ourselves and setting boundaries and asking for what we need. We can be afraid of rejection at every turn, and so that can hold us back from taking risks. Don't forget that attachment is not only tied to the responsiveness, but it's tied to our exploration. So that the reality is, the more secure we are, the more likely we are to go out and take risks and explore the world. And so the more disorganized or unsafe kind of, you know, we may have had that kind of childhood where we just decided that risks weren't a good idea. And so we just, we just don't do them. We always think others are judging us and, you know, it's like at all times there's a camera or light on us or a lens and they're just every single thing you know, internally and externally. That's that internal and external critic for ourselves. It's just very intense and very harsh on everyone else. And that we just, at the end of the day, think that love is conditional and love must be earned at all times. And yes, at some level there are conditions to love in some ways. But our template is that everything is about what makes us lovable or not. There is no just, you know, sense of love for who we are or we don't get a pass with someone we love. Everything is a judgment and everything must be earned. So those are where I can really see where the shame shows up in our lives. And it's really important to do the work on letting go of that piece because, you know, if you walk around from the perspective of, I'll never be enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy, it's going to infect every single relationship, not affect, infect. And you begin to feel that sickness in relationships because you draw people to you who don't value you and because you don't value you, right? And so it's really hard to have any real sense of, of true security in relationships if that really is your template. So. I hope today's video was you know, enlightening in some way or validating of what you feel, but know that this is not who you are. It is just part of what you had to, um, it's part of the sacrifice you made to survive your childhood, but you don't have to live in it or be defined by it. So thank you for watching. Please stay safe and well, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.